Hey, welcome back to Turntable Guy. And on the bench today, we have a lovely Dual 502. This is a belt drive uh, semi-automatic. Um, it has the auto lift, not the auto return. So it's a nice simple deck. It's kind of like uh, the 505 that followed it. Uh, these are really nice decks. Uh, very nice to service, nice to work on. They sound very good. Um, this one is a little bit earlier than the 505, but uh, very similar in construction. Probably, you know, might have a better arm. I'm just going to pull off this uh, dust cover here. Uh, it's got the uh, classic dual uh, cartridge carriage that's removed by sliding this back. Um, and this one is equipped with a very nice Shure M95ED. So that's a really nice cartridge. It's got an aftermarket stylus on it. And I can just see with my naked eye here that um, there's plenty of needle left on that. So uh, you will see this with some duels. Um, a little bit of oxidation on the uh, contacts for the cartridge. That's easily cleaned up with a toothbrush and some uh, deoxit. And what I like to do with these is I always like to check to see that the little springs on these uh, contacts here are... Uh, still springy so to speak and they make good contact one of the things you do have to do on these is to clean the contacts on the inside of the head shell that's part of uh, the dual service so actually before i uh, take that off let's just uh, make sure we're uh, spinning and uh, one of the major issues with these tables is cables uh, duels are notorious for bad rca cables and or RCA plugs. Uh, these don't look too bad. They're a little oxidized here on the plug end, but uh, not too bad. There's no ground cable on these. And uh, so white is left and black is red, if you're curious about that. I'm just give this some AC power and see if we've got some spinning action here. It's pretty much all a mechanical deck. You won't see any electronic switching or anything in here. Okay, so this should uh, lift up and then it should start spinning and then you, you are to drop the arm. That's dropping nice and slow. So we do have decent speed it looks like. And we're just going to check our auto lift at the end of the record and there we go. So that's working and that, that's a good sign. Okay, so I did hear a little bit of, um, I know it's really hard to, to hear on the, on camera, but I thought I heard a little bit of scrapage. I'm just wondering if uh, there's any lubricant left in this bearing. Okay, so uh, why don't we start here. Now we'll pull off our cartridge. It's a little tight. Let's see if we can adjust that. Okay, Matt should come straight off. And uh, so you can see our belt and our motor, our changer, speed changer there. It won't change until the arm is moved over on these. Um, and to get this platter off, it will not just lift off. Oh yeah, you can, I can I can just feel here that this has no lubrication left. Um, there's a small screw that you can access through this hole here. And what you need to do is just loosen it in quarter turn or half turn or so, and then slide it over like this. And that will uh, disengage the lock. There's a little lock that keeps the platter from coming up. So the platter should come up now. So you just want to remove your belt and just rest it on the inside. And now your platter should come up. Oh yeah, can you hear that? I don't want to do it too many times. There's no lubricant left on this. It is totally dry. I mean, we're talking nothing left. And just a just a little bit of glazing left. And uh, excuse my head. There's nothing in the bearing. 
nothing. Right, let me see if I can zoom in. That bearing is empty. Oh, focus just went out. Come on, focus. Right in here. Empty. So, this is why you need to service your turntables. Okay. If you've watched any of my other dual servicing um, videos, you'll know that to take care of a dual, you on most duels anyway, you have to lift them out of the casing. And sometimes there are wires attached um, through some kind of plate in the back here. This one looks like they're just uh, they just go through the, the hole here, so it's not a huge problem. So all you need to do is, is loosen these three on this one retainers and I always like to start with the uh, side by the tone arm what you want to do is once that's loose is you just want to push it like that to disengage it from the, from the case okay and then lift up and then you can do these other sides like this and one more here just uh, make sure it's loose first And then you can lift it out. And then you can remove the turntable from the case. And you just got to fish these wires through. And if you're a neat freak, you can take this outside and give it a wash. Oh, what do we got here? Oh, that's a... Uh, that's a knob for the uh, the cover. Okay, and we've got the motor sticker here. So it's an SM840. I'm not sure if the 840 is one of those uh, motors that is notorious for spinning backwards. And there's little you can do about them. I have to look that up. Okay, so we have our turntable out of the case. These wires out of the way. Like that. And uh, I think our first plan of attack here will be to service the motor before we do anything else. So we're going to zoom in a little bit. And we're going to get a block. And we're going to make sure that our uh, tone arm isn't banging up and down on the uh, working surface here. I might be able to service this. Oh, this is a nice motor. I'm just going to see here. Let's get a block over here. Check that tone arm. Okay, let's get this centered so we can do a nice service here. So it's in, in view. How's that? Pretty good. And we can zoom in just a little bit more. Like that. That's a big, nice, beefy motor, right? Eh? Okay, so I probably should have removed the nuts on the top first before I did this. So just let me do that. There's a three nuts here holding it in. Sorry about that, my uh, battery died. I just plugged in here. Um, yeah, so it's just uh, three nuts from the top to uh, drop a motor down. And uh, I'll make that four. Oh, there's another screw. Sorry. This fourth one here. Every other duel has three. Okay. Back on the block. The motor and vision here. 
Okay, here's our motor. So, uh, what can we do with this one? Standard service. This has got uh, rubber on here. Interesting. So the uh, 505 has a, uh, adjustable pitch control, and uh, this one does not. This one is, uh, uh, you set the speed by turning in this screw, and it opens up the splines on the motor spindle. So that's how the speed is adjusted on this, on this turntable, which is perfectly fine, because I find pitch control to be pretty useless most of the time. So anyway, let's get uh, let's see if we can get this open and get this bottom bearing cap off. We can service the bottom bearing, and then we can service the top bearing from the top. Looks like. Let's see if we get this bottom one off. Yeah. Okay, yeah, bottom bearing is very accessible. It's totally dry as well. There's nothing left in there. So we're gonna fill this up with uh, electric motor oil. And uh, just make sure that this is clean. I'm sure it is, because there's nothing left in there. Yeah, there's a little bit of, a little bit of gunk on there. Nothing too bad though. All right, so clean that all up nice, and then we'll grab our electric motor oil. This right here. And we are going to fill this up. So what, what, what goes on here is, um, it's a centered bearing, right? So there is a uh, piece of felt or cloth or something in there that absorbs the oil and keeps it moist and keeps the bearing lubricated. And uh, you can put a few drops in, but then you'll see it'll go down as the uh, cloth will absorb it, right? So, yeah, that went right down. There's nothing left. You can put it in, in these little holes, too. As you can see, it is going down nicely. And we'll just let that sit. I think we're full. Yeah, that's great. So we're nice and full with oil here. Put that back on. Just tighten these up. Nice and snug. Just like that. And, uh, yeah, we're going to have to lubricate our top bearing. I think what I'm going to do is maybe I'll, um, uh, Maybe two screws holding this on. There's a couple ways to get oil in here. Um, the top of the motor on this is actually riveted, right? So we can't actually drop the motor out of this case. So uh, what we're trying to do is get a little bit of oil in that top bearing. A couple ways you can do that. You can get a screwdriver with some oil and touch the top, put a few drops on there and let it soak down. Or you can remove the spindle here. There are two retaining screws. I'd rather not do that. I think I'm going to go the screwdriver route here and just get the oil in there. And if you hear a little kind of that noise that you're hearing there, that's my dog. He's uh, going to be 15 years old this year. And like an old man, he's, uh, he's pretty cranky. He gets uh, either bored or upset. 
this screwdriver is not going to do the job. It's too thick. Okay, here's option three. We're going to put a schlob right at the base. Like that. That's gone in. Okay, that went in nicely. So I just put a little drop there. Actually, a little bit more, no, a little drop. And that motor sounds fantastic. Okay. All right, so that's the motor service. I'll just rest it there for now. You can just have a look. Let me zoom back out. We'll have a look at uh, other lubrication points. Okay, let's get our arm supported again. All right, so uh grease here looks pretty good i have to say it's not sticky uh, but you know um i think what we'll do here is we'll clean off what we got anyway and we'll put some fresh grease in just because it's probably been there for god knows how many years although this doesn't look original to me what's around here Just clean it off with a little bit of alcohol and kick it. And uh, saw some more over here around the arm. That looks original. That kind of orangey grease looks very original to me. And uh, this can be lubricated here. And then we can put a couple drops of just natural oil in uh, some of the spots where there's no grease, just to uh, help lubricate joints and stuff. So like here, and drop there, and I have to put a drop here. That adjusts the uh, lead-in position. Anywhere where there's a joint, just put a little drop of machine oil or electric motor oil, whatever you have. It's not that important. Yeah, this I already hit with a little bit of uh, three in one lithium, just a little bit there. And uh, let's grab our uh, synthetic grease. Move this up. And there's a little bit underneath on this plastic here. And we're going to put a little bit where the tone arm is around this knob here. I think that's it. I want to put a little bit of drop, another drop of oil right here. Just like that. Oh yeah, in here. A little bit right there. Okay. Okay, so we've got the motor serviced, got our chassis greased up. Let's just move the arm here and see what kind of motion we're getting. Looks good. So I think we can bolt our motor back in. All right. So if you sit your table back down on its butt here, you can just uh, 
insert those three motor pegs through. And then there was this one here, which is a screw. And then our three nuts. Okay, great. All right, so next, let's do a bearing service. So we're gonna clean up the bearing well, even though it's pretty dry to begin with. A little bit of alcohol on the Q-tip. This is really, really, really dry. There's no oil on this. It's just dirt. I hope that this table wasn't used a lot in this dry state, it can score the sides of a bearing well, right? So, I mean, we're gonna put a good lubricant in there. And uh, we'll clean off and clean off the spindle as well. So just a little bit of alcohol and a paper towel. Let's clean that up. I don't see any scoring on that. I certainly hope there's none. Squeaky clean. I don't see any scoring. The uh, this sits on plastic, so I don't expect a lot of wear there, but uh, this rides inside of brass, right? So metal upon metal contact. Oh, well, we're here. Let's take our belt off and we will clean the inside where the belt rides. And we will also clean the belt itself. And uh, as you can see here, one side is kind of shiny and the other side is kind of dull because this side's been riding against the motor its whole life. So we're gonna turn it around. Let me clean this first. Got any grease and oil off of there. Pretty clean. Okay, next, we want to clean the motor spindle right here. Okay, so I like to turn the motor on. So we'll just plug it in with the motor spinning. Just grab a little bit of. Uh, alcohol on a q-tip again and uh, just run it against the splines here get off any belt residue
just like that. Make sure there's no fuzzies from the uh, Q-tip. And there's not. All right, I think our bearing has dried. Let's lube that puppy up. Again, same thing, electric motor oil. Three or four drops in there. I'm not going to install the belt yet. I'm just going to drop our uh, our platter and uh, spindle down here just to see how it goes in. You can already tell it's a lot quieter and spinning beautifully. And that'll get coated with oil as it spins. Nice. Much better. Okay, we can put our belt back now. And uh, this has got a nice coating of oil on it now. Out a little bit here. So just uh, grab your belt, have a look at it. This side's very shiny. This side's quite a bit duller, so we're gonna put the duller side on the inside. Just like that. And finger, hold the belt, insert, wrap around the motor, okay. You can lock this platter again if you like. I usually leave mine unlocked because it's not like I am pulling up on the platter, but we'll lock it down and then we'll just have a quick check here. Get nice speed. And switch to 45. Back to 33. And it comes over. It stops. Okay. So that's the lubrication service on this deck and uh, it's not too difficult let's service the tone arm now i'm gonna take you down from the mount and uh, hopefully my battery doesn't die again and uh, we're gonna have a look at the contact points and i'm gonna i'm gonna try and do it with a handheld uh, camera here and, and see how that goes just hang on a sec okay guys you're looking inside of the uh, of the head shell of a of a dual turntable with this style of head shell you see those four or five black um hang on sorry i, I don't have my light i'm going to do this without a light I'm, i can see that it's still bright enough you see these five like lines here they go down each of these is connected to one of the tone uh tone arm head shell wires okay and uh, hang on, let me get the light back in there again. So you can see where the uh, head shell plugs in because you see those little round dots? That's the actual contact point, okay? So the head shell, when it locks into place, those springy uh, bits uh, touch against those contacts and that's where uh, your contact is made. It's a really iffy design because um, as you can see, a lot of oxidation happens on those uh, contacts there. So what you need to do is uh, you need to get some contact cleaner or even a little bit of sandpaper and alcohol and you need to scrape those clean. And uh, you don't have to have the whole thing shiny because obviously the contact area is pretty small, but you definitely want to clean that off. 
This one's not bad. I can see that the contact points are still okay. They haven't tarnished because that's where the head shell has been sitting for like 40 years. But um, you can see how the rest of it's tarnished. And sometimes if you're removing it and putting it back on, and as soon as the air gets in there, it oxidizes, right? So um, I'm gonna just I'm just gonna try a little bit first with a little bit of alcohol and uh, a Q-tip. Hang on one sec, I'll be right back. Okay, so you get a Q-tip, right? And you get in here, and you just you clean these. What you're trying to do is remove some of that oxidation. Now, if you find it's really stubborn. Like this is pretty stubborn and uh, you can see a little bit of gunge coming off there it's not bad there's no way I'm gonna be able to do this on camera so um, you can also try some deoxid because deoxid will uh, remove that oxidation uh, or you can uh, physically scrape it like I said with a little bit of sandpaper um, or a pick or something and just you know remove it gently don't scratch the hell out of it but just uh, remove the oxidation so let me do that I'm gonna clean it up and we'll be right back okay here we are back and there are the contacts. I scraped them a little bit, got them cleaner. Uh, they're not perfect, but uh, they're definitely a lot cleaner. Um, so I used uh, just a little bit of thousand grit in there and just gently with the tip of a screwdriver just went up and down a little bit and then cleaned it off with a little bit of alcohol. You'll see a little bit of scratching there, but uh, it's nothing bad. So anyway, that'll be a lot better. And then, um, what you want to do is uh, with your head shell you can get a little bit of sandpaper and just uh, clean the ends of those come on focus there we go okay or a file or something and just clean those off so you got a good solid connection all right so I'm gonna take care of that I'll be right back all right so the head shell is back in so now we're just going to do a quick sound check to make sure we got sound in both channels. Like I mentioned, these cables can be notorious for uh, for breaking. So we're going to see if we got any sound here. Make sure we're on phono. Let's see if we got left and right channel. we do excellent right on so this is going well all right let's put our table back in our case we will set up our arm and uh, we'll do a quick sound check on this table Out of the way. Now I like to put it in backwards so I can feed the wires in. Because it's not particularly easy to do. Looks like it's a bit of a pain in the butt. I don't really love the fact that the power cable and the RCA cables go through the same hole, I'll be honest with you. I mean, I haven't really heard any kind of hum due to that, because the cables are shielded. But uh, I never thought it was the best idea to do that. Come on, baby. Go through there. It is a pain. There we go. Okay. So pull it through. And then what you want to do is... Again, I like to start over here and I like to bend this uh, retainer in. And I like to get that side in.
I like to get it in. Doesn't mean I'm gonna get it in, okay? And then you wanna bend these two. Continue pulling your wires through. And ease the other side in. And once your springs are in their proper spot, you're home free. And you'll know because your table's bouncy, okay? All right. So to set up the arm on a 502, what you're going to want to do is you're going to, no, I don't think you need to plug it in. No, you don't need to plug it in. You need to release your cueing, okay, and let it drop. All right. There is a retaining screw here, and what it does is it uh, moves the weight back and forth. First of all, turn this to zero. Turn it to zero. And then loosen this retaining screw. And what we're trying to do is balance the arm by pulling this in and out. You're not turning this yet, okay? You're pulling the whole thing in and out. Actually, let's put your, uh, oh, it is at zero. Make it a little bit negative. No, no leave it right there. So just in a little bit. It's really touchy, eh? So. So get it as close as you can because it will turn. We can use a turn adjustment in a moment here. Just get it as close as you can, as floating as possible. I'm going to go right there, even though it was lifting up. Now, turn this in just a little bit. I'm just going to loosen this a little bit. I just want to get this in just a smidge. Right there. That's perfect right there, okay? Move your arm back. This is a pretty light tracking cartridge from the factory. It's about 1.25 grams. This is an aftermarket stylus. So I'm gonna set it at one and a half. Which is right there. And it's a uh, elliptical stylus. So here's your gauge for elliptical and here's your gauge for conical. So the outside gauge. So we'll go one and a half right there. And that my friends is it. Have a look at our needle here. I'm definitely going to give that a little cleaning. For unknown styli, I like to use just a dab of 70% alcohol. If you have a stylus cleaner that uh, you like to use, by all means. This needle is very new. You know you got a lot of needle left and you can see it with your uh, bare eyes. Okay. Okay. Back in. Let's plug it back in. And uh, we'll grab a record. See how it plays. And we should check speed too, because. Uh, there is an adjustment on this table, so I just want to—I want to get a rough idea how speed is on this. Hmm, that's a weird sound. Pretty sure this doesn't have a muting switch. That's not thirty-three. All right, so we got a little issue here. What's going on? 
the belt not go back to 33. Or is this the 840 motor issue? Oh my goodness, it certainly is. Now it's turning at 33. Okay. So, this is the dual 840 motor. And it is known for spinning too fast when you start it. You have to bring it back, start it again, and you'll be at the correct speed. Now, if you watch a uh, fellow Canadian 12-volt uh, vids, I think he's done a video on uh, that 840 motor as well. And same thing. Nothing you can do about it. I think there's an interchangeable motor that you can put in here. Uh, but there's nothing you can do at this point. That's correct. That's 33. So it is, it is the 840. Speed's good. Race which waves in air their dwelling place. Dreams and then by day I shall be well again. It might be a smidge fast. But uh, yeah, so this is the uh, the 840 motor. I, I forgot the model number. I knew there was one. And there's there's some that, uh, I, I said originally that it spins backwards. No, the SM100 will do that when you have bad capacitors. But the 840 does have a problem with spinning too fast. Uh, there's lots of forum uh, uh, posts on that problem. Uh, our speed was a, just a smidge fast. I'm just going to adjust this out a little bit here. Just got to hold it and turn it. Let's see how that is, unless we're in 45 mode again here. It's much better. So, yeah, this is the dreaded 840 motor. So you have to, I, I'm not sure exactly what's going on there. I think what's happening is once the, uh, the motor is starting, it's sending some feedback. Oh, there we go. Now we're spinning too fast again. This is the 45. Look, check this out. Actually, it's more than 45. See how fast it's going? Now if I go back, come forward, it's okay. Yeah, um, fascinating. Oh, there it goes again. What a pain in the butt, eh? Nothing you can do about it either. Nothing. It spins. Once it's in the right speed, it spins perfectly, right? Interesting. Never thought I would uh, see one of these, but here it is. Anyway, uh, that's it. That's the uh, that's the dual 502 with the uh, SM840 motor. And uh, you've seen what it does. And if you have one of these things, I guess, uh, I'm not sure if it's the 860. You have to excuse me for that. I, I don't remember what it is. But you can check out 12 Volt Vid's video on that. He explains it uh, in a little bit more detail as to why it does it and what the fault is. Um, so as far as we're concerned here, the turntable is serviced. We've re-lubricated everything on it. It's running well, uh, but it's got that motor issue and uh, we're gonna leave it right there. Thanks for tuning in guys, I appreciate it as always, and we will see you in the next video, bye.